Hi guys, gals and non-binary pals, welcome back to Budget Brew with me, Lotus, of Lotus Bloom Gaming. With Baldur's Gate still in full swing, I'm still looking at these legendary creatures, getting very excited, as we can see with this next one. Miriam Sentinel Worm. It crept just over $30 TCG market price, so it's under $35. But Miriam's Sentinel Worm is 3 green, blue, red for a legendary creature, Dragon Spirit, 6-6, six, six, Flying and Ward 2. It has, whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a token that is a copy of it, except the token isn't legendary if that dragon is legendary. So the way that we built this deck was, let's try and trigger that ability as much as we can, play as many dragons as we can, within the budget available, and there's also a spicy win con in there as well. So let's start with the ramp. We have Acolyte of Bahamut, one and a green for a legendary enchantment background. It's in the 99, so we're absolutely fine. Uh, Commander creatures you own have the first dragon spell you cast each turn costs two colourless less to cast. We then have the full cycle of the Orb of Dragonkind with the Carnelian, which is two and a red for an artifact, with tap add red. If it was spent to cast a dragon creature spell, it gains haste. We have the Jade for two and a green with tap add green. When you spend this mana to cast a dragon creature spell, it enters the battlefield with an additional plus one counter on it, and it gains hexproof until your next turn. And Lapis, two and a blue, tap four blue. And when you spend this mana to cast a dragon creature spell, scry two. Dragon Lord's Servant, one and a red for a one three goblin shaman. Dragon spells you cast cost one colorless less to cast. Dragon Speaker Shaman, 1 red red for a 2 2 human barbarian shaman. Dragon spells you cast cost 2 colorless less to cast. And you happen on a glade, 2 and a green for an instant. We get to choose one. We journey on, search your library for up to 2 basic land cards, reveal them, put them in our hand, and shuffle. Or make camp, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. We have Securitus Root, three and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards and or gate cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Explore the Underdark is four and a green for a sorcery. Search your library for two basic land cards and or gate cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle and gain the initiative. And Navigation Orb. 3 mana for an artifact that has 2 and tap, sacrifice it, search your library for up to 2 basic land cards and or gate cards, reveal those cards, put one on the battlefield tapped and the other in your hand and shuffle. Now we go on to the card draw aspect. Bag of tricks is 1 and a green for an artifact, it's not quite card draw, but it gets us a card from our deck. Uh, for 4 and a green, we can tap and roll a d8. We reveal cards from the top of our library until you reveal a creature card with mana value equal to the result. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This, if it was a dragon that came in and our commander is out, will still get the copy. Colossal Majesty, 2 and a green for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, we draw a card. Our commander triggers that, let alone all the dragons. Draconic Lore is 5 in a blue for an instant, and it costs 2 less if you control a dragon. So for 3 in a blue, draw 3 cards. And Dragon's Horde, 3 mana artifact. Whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under your control, put a gold counter on it. Tap, remove a gold counter from this to draw a card, or tap to add 1 mana of any colour. We have Garrick's Uprising, 2 and a green for an enchantment. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, if you control a creature with power 4 or greater, draw a card. Creatures you control have Trample, 
and whenever a creature with power 4 or greater enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. Again, notice it doesn't say non-token. Inspiring Refrain is 4 blue blue for a sorcery. Draw 2 cards, exile it with 3 time counters on it, or you can sp suspend it for 3 for 2 and a blue. So this is a very underappreciated card and I absolutely love this card. So rather than cast this card you can spend the 2 and a blue to exile it with 3 time counters on it at the beginning of your upkeep remove a time counter. When the last counter is removed cast it. When you cast it you then re-exile it with 3 more time counters and it will constantly cycle every 3 turns. Lifecaster's Bestiary, 3 mana for an artifact, at the beginning of your upkeep scry 1, whenever you cast a creature spell you pay green and then draw a card. Primal Empathy, 1 green blue for an enchantment, at the beginning of your upkeep draw a card if you control a creature with the greatest power, otherwise put a plus 1 counter on a creature you control, either way it's good for us. Now we go into the meat of the deck, the Durgans. So we have Amethyst Dragon, it's a 4-4 with Flying in Haste, but we have a Sorcery built onto it that deals 4 damage divided as we choose among any number of targets. We have a Tarka World Render, which just gives our dragons a double strike until end of turn. Bogodan Hellkite, it's a Flash Flying 5-5 that when it enters the battlefield, it deals 5 damage divided as we choose among any number of targets. And remember, if our commander's out, we get two of these. Draconic Muralists, three and a green for a 4-3. When it dies, you may search your library for a dragon card, reveal it, put it in your hand and shuffle. We have Dragonborn Champion, a 5-3 with Trample. Whenever a source you control deals five or more damage to a player, draw a card. Dracoseth, more of Flames. Uh, when the Maul of Flames attacks, it deals 4 damage to any target, and 3 damage to each of up to 2 other targets. Dread Linorm, uh, it's a 7-6 that can't be blocked by creatures with power 3 or less, but it has an instant built into it that you can put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on target creature and untap it, and give it Hexproof for a little bit of protection. Emerald Dragon is a 4-4 Flying Trample, but with an instant counter target activated or triggered ability from a non-creature source. Ganax Astral Hunter is another one of the new ones. It's a 3-4 Flying Dragon that whenever this or another dragon enters the battlefield under your control, create a treasure token. Harbinger of the Hunt, it has two abilities on it. Has two and a red. Harbinger of the Hunt deals one damage to each creature without flying, so he can clear pesky tokens, or two and a green to deal one damage to each other creature with flying if there's a lot of token flyers that can block us. Horde Smelter Dragon, putting this one in here for the ability of three and a red, destroy target artifact, and this gets plus X plus O, where the X was the artifact's mana value, clearing up some of those artifacts. Corlesser Scale Singer, 1 green, 1 blue for a 1 4 Dragon Bard. You can look at the top card of your library at any time and you can cast dragon spells from the top of our library. Loz Hand Dragon's Legacy, uh, so this is a 4 2 Flying Dragon Shaman that whenever you cast an adventure spell or a dragon spell, uh, this will deal damage equal to that spell's mana value to any target that isn't a commander. And if we can get a copy of this, it will be double damage for everything we do that's either adventure spells or dragon spells. Uh, Niv Mizzet, just to deal one damage to targets and draw a bit of card. Obsidian Charmor, it can be reduced by the amount of lands that our opponents control that produce colourless. But we're putting this one in here for the ability, when it enters the battlefield, destroy target non-basic land, just in case we have to f go against uh, Field of the Dead, or other land similar. Renari, Merchant of Marvels, 3 and a blue for a 2-4 dragon. Uh, you may cast dragon spells and artifact spells as though they had flash. 
So if we can cast them from the top of our library and at flash, we can have a lot of value from those two. We have Sapphire Dragon. It's a flying 5-6. Whenever Sapphire Dragon attacks or blocks, we get to scry two. And it also has an instant on the other side, counter target non-creature spell. Savage Ventmore, whenever it attacks, we get three red and three green for the rest of our turn. Scaled Nurturer is one and a green for a 0-2 that has tap add green. When you spend this mana to cast a dragon creature, you gain two life. So we don't have to use it for dragons, but it's a bonus. Scanos Dragonheart is a four and a green for a 4-4 dragon ranger that whenever it attacks, it gets plus X plus X and to end a turn where X is the greatest power among other dragons you control and dragon cards in your graveyard. Skyline Despot, five red red for a five five that when it enters we become the monarch and the beginning of our upkeep if we are the monarch still, create a five five red dragon with flying. Steel Hellkite, just in case that we get through with some damage, we can pay X to destroy each non-land permanent with mana value X, whose controller was dealt damage by Steel Hellkite. Thrakus the Butcher, uh, when this attacks, double the power of each dragon we control until end of turn. And Thunderbreak Regent, two red red for a 4-4. Four, four. Whenever a dragon you control becomes a target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, this deals 3 damage to that player, and if we've got a copy of it, it'll be 6. Tyrant's Familiar, it's a 5-5 flying haste dragon with lieutenant. As long as we control our commander, this gets plus 2, plus 2, and has. Whenever Tyrant's Familiar attacks, it deals 7 damage to target creature defending player controls. Vodris Rage of Ancients. This is a 5-4 with an Enrage. Whenever Vodris Rage of Agents is dealt damage, you may create a 5-4 red and green dragon creature token with when this creature deals damage, sacrifice it. And whenever we roll one or more dice, you may have Vodris deal one damage to itself. And we're already rolling dice with our bag of tricks from earlier. Wandering Troutador, three and a green for a Bard Dragon. At the beginning of your end step, if you had a land enter the battlefield under your control this turn, venture into the dungeon. And Wrathful Red Dragon, three red red for a flying 5-5. Whenever a dragon you control is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to any target that isn't a dragon. And if we have two of these out, that's a lot of damage that we can do. Now let's protect ourselves even though those dragons are quite beasty as it is. But we have Bane's Contingency, one blue blue for an instant, counter target spell. But if that spell that we countered was targeting a commander we control, we scry two, then draw a card replacing this card. Bar the gate, two and a blue, counter target creature or planeswalker spell and venture into the dungeon. Bower's Passage is one and a green for an enchantment, it's not quite protection, but creatures with flying can't block creatures we control. So our flying dragons have the protection of not being blocked. Jahira's Respite, four and a green for an instant. Search your library for up to X basic land cards where X is the number of creatures attacking me, or you. Put those cards onto the battlefield tapped and shuffle, then prevent all combat damage that be dealt this turn. Sword Coast Sailor, one and a blue, legendary enchantment, background. Commander creatures you own have, whenever this creature attacks a player, if no opponent has more life than that player, this creature can't be blocked this turn. Again, not quite protection, but if there's someone on higher life than all the other opponents, we can beat them with our commander without the fear of being blocked. And what we can't protect from, we'll remove. We have Band Together, two and a green for an instant. Up to two target creatures you control, each deal damage equal to their power to another target creature. 
my favourite barrier breach, two and a green for an instant, exile up to three target enchantments, or cycle it for two. Barroom Brawl is one and a green for a sorcery. Target creature you control fights target creature the opponent to your left controls. Then that player may copy this spell and may choose new targets for the copy. For a bit of political fun. Breath Weapon, two and a red for an instant. Breath Weapon deals two damage to each non-dragon creature, hopefully sweeping away those little annoying tokens. Disaster Radius is five red red for a sorcery. As an additional cost to cast this spell, reveal a creature card from our hand. Disaster Radius deals X damage to each creature your opponents control, where X is the revealed card's converted mana cost. Dragons are very high cost. Magua Quake, X red red for an instant, deals X damage to each creature without flying and each planeswalker. Storm's Wrath to deal 4 damage to each creature and each planeswalker. And Structural Assault, 3 red red for a sorcery. Destroy all artifacts. Then Structural Assault deals damage to each creature equal to the number of artifacts that was put into the graveyard from the battlefield this turn. And finally, War Storm Surge. Not quite removal, but we can use it as so. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. And we're getting double dragons entering. And then just for a little bit of buff, we have Master Chef, that commander creatures we own have this creature enters the battlefield with an additional plus one counter on it. And other creatures we control enter the battlefield with an additional one counter on them, making them slightly bigger. Overwhelming Encounter, three green green for a sorcery. Creatures you control gain Vigilance and Trample until end of turn is already good, but you get to roll a d20. 1 to 9, creatures also get plus what, 2 plus 2. 10 to 19, those plus 2 become 2 counters. And if we roll a nat 20, we put 4 plus 1 counters on each creature we control. Dragon Cultist, Legendary Enchantment Background. Commander creatures we own have, at the beginning of your end step, if a source you control dealt 5 or more damage this turn, create a 4-4 red dragon creature token with flying. If I eat wild visitor, 2 and a blue for an enchantment, our commander has, whenever one or more non-token creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, create a 1-1 blue fairy dragon creature token with flying. Mirror of Life Trapping. 4 mana for an artifact. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, if it was cast, exile it. Then return all other permanent cards exiled with the Mirror of Life Trapping to the battlefield under their owner's control. So, although it doesn't create tokens itself, it helps us. We cast a dragon, it enters the battlefield. We make a token because it entered the battlefield. It then, because it's not a replacement effect, it's a trigger, the original dragon goes under the mirror. We cast another dragon. The dragon enters, makes a token, goes under the mirror. The first dragon comes back out, making another dragon. So we're making twice as many dragons. And then for the mana base, we get to the spiciness of the second win con other than beating face. We have Grawl Gilgate, Izzet Gilgate, Simic Gilgate, and Gateway Plaza. We have Cliff Gate, which is red and another colour. Mana Gate, which is green and another colour. Sea Gate, which is blue and another colour. And Heap Gate, which can filter, tap for colourless, or pay one and tap and another gate to make a treasure token. We have Boulder's Gate, which can tap for a colourless or two and tap and we add X mana of any one color where X is the number of gates we control. We have Basilisk Gate, which is two and tap. Target creature gets plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is a number of gates we control. Gond Gate makes our gates come in untapped. And then we have Commander Tower. And to finalize, we have Maze's End, because if we pay three and tap and return Maze's End owner's hand, we can search our library for a gate, put it onto the battlefield, shuffle our library, then if we control 10 or more gates with different names, 
we win the game. Our deck has 11 gates, so we are more than capable to do this. And to round it off, we have 5 islands, 10 mountains, and 6 forests. Here's the basic list of the deck. The deck actually came to $31, uh, TCG market price, and it was Maze's End that kept creeping up in price. The actual deck without Maze's End is about $8 less. So it's up to you if you want to take Maze's End out, but I have found that with the new search spells to find two gates and the Boulder's Gate that taps for more mana, especially in the smaller budget is very good and makes our mana base very easy to manage. So what we want to do in the early game is try and get as much gatage out as possible, build our mana up, cast our commander and then start casting our dragons and making the copies of them. And then just attack continuously causing a threat while our gates slowly amount in the background until it's too late and they can't deal with either the dragons or our alternate win con mazes end. So what do you think of the deck? I've played it a few times and I've loved playing every moment of it. Um, I went up against a Ur Dragon deck and I wouldn't say I won because the game finished as the shop had to shut, but I was holding my own. But now it's down to you, what would you change? What would you add? If you weren't building it to a budget, what would you put in instead? So leave your comments below for me to read. I tr do read them all and I do respond where I can. And please share, like and subscribe. I'm so close to my end of year target of 250 subscribers. I would love to get there and I love to keep doing what I do. We also have a Discord where you can chat with us and brew and discuss new cards that keep coming out. Also, there's the Patreon if you fancy to support me in a more monetary value. Otherwise, thanks again, and we'll see you next time.